Today's segment of Sound Balming is brought to you by Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care. I cannot express to you how much we love, love, love their products. Although we use them all year, as the weather gets colder, we need these products even more. The dreaded drop in temperature, the dryness, the itchiness, and the unnecessary flakiness is inevitable. Shea Butter from Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care is the only thing that works for my skin and hair needs. Not only do these products cure my dry skin, the whipped butter goes on smoothly and doesn't leave that uncomfortably thick, sticky residue. Bonus? It smells absolutely amazing. There are so many different scents to choose from too. Not only do they carry skincare products, there are products for authentic living, face, shower, hair and beard, spritzers and perfumes, and bath products. Let me tell you, we cannot even keep the stuff in the studio. The entire production team as well as all our children use Jimmy and Mary's product. Jimmy and Mary's take pride in creating quality handcrafted products from simple ingredients for the entire family. Their products are made for all skin types and are 100% handmade, 100% vegan, and 100% cruelty-free. Skincare is important. Moisture is key, and keeping our skin and hair hydrated is essential. I cannot emphasize how much we trust Jimmy and Mary's for all of our skincare needs. Hurry on up to jimmyandmarys.com and check out their products. Did I mention service is fast and efficient too? Don't forget to mention that you heard about Jimmy and Mary's authentic skincare on Sound Balming. Use the discount code SOUNDBALM20 to get 15% off. That's SOUNDBALM20 for 15% off at Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Skin Care. Hey everybody, welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life-changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith, encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time of the day is. You are with me, your man, Dr. Lamar Darnell Shields, in the bomb shelter. Welcome to Sound Bombing. I am the creator of Sound Bombing, and my goal with this show is to introduce you to people with ideas that will help you unlock your full potential. Like my last guest, Kim Addis, who talked about all the great things that she's doing in coaching. She talked about journaling and she talked about overcoming these major obstacles. So I want you to go out and check out the great work that Kim is doing. And today is no different. Our next guest is a powerful woman in her own right. Carolyn Colleen, who is a fierce mother of three children like me, author like me, international speaker like me, entrepreneur like me, but I'm not a mother, I'm a dad. She's a business strategist focused on helping others achieve their goals. She is the founder of the Fierce Academy, an online program that helps women create life strategies that enables them to have the life they dream of without sacrificing their families, careers, or lifestyle. She is the author of Fierce, Transform Your Life in the face of adversity, five minutes at a time. She's a consultant, a thought leader for Case Western University, a leader of exchange approach and an initiative built upon scientifically based multidisciplinary approach for leading and managing teams. Carolyn's life story is one of personal and professional transformation and triumph. She is a living example that there is anything that's holding you back, you have the power to overcome it 
and to achieve all of your goals. She's gone from a child who survived abu abuse to be a fierce and fearless woman whose mission is to serve other women who want to transform their lives. And if you're looking at her, you see that this sister is fierce. Carolyn, thanks for joining me in the bomb shelter. How are you? And let my listeners know where you are calling in from. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I'm calling in from the tundra of Minnesota. <laughs> the tundra of yes. Minnesota, the place where the it gets so cold in Minnesota that you either have to go underground or the buildings are connected. Let, the, right. let our listeners know what cold is like in Minnesota. That's right. So you get, you know, average negative 20 for at least a week out of the winter. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And so your your <laughs> your meteorologist don't even come on and say the temperature. He, he or she probably just says it's cold as sugar, honey, iced tea is cold as hell. Like all of these other descriptions describe the cold. Me being That's from right. Chicago, I mean, you know, you went to school you know, in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> that wind off Lake Michigan ain't no joke, but it's nothing like Minnesota. So let's do a let's do a check in. How are you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It's Thursday and I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> and you know the day because you know with this pandemic, Carolyn, the days run into nights, the nights run into the days. You That's think right. of Saturday, you think of <laughs> Sunday, you think of all of those things. So I just want to thank you for hanging out with me. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure you're excited because we have a woman. It looks like you that's in the White House. We talk about the year of the woman. First of all, I, as Tupac said, I got my name from a woman, got my game from a, from a woman. I was raised by a woman. So it's always been the year of the woman in the Shields household. But are you excited right now for yes. women? Yes, I am. You didn't even, she didn't even <laughs> let didn't me even. finish the question. <laughs> so what makes you so excited for this year for women in general? Yes, it's exciting because we have an opportunity to really lean into that feminine power. And that feminine power, it's an, it's an energy that, that women are very good at if they lean into it. But men, you know, men can be too. And it's, it's that, that welcoming, that ability to make strategy, that ability to have grace. And we need that in our country and in our humanity right now is grace. That sounds like a great PSA for the Biden uh, campaign. For <laughs> that was so... That was so well written, and and I, and I'm and I'm joking because I've read so many things that you've said that you tweeted about, and so your mind is amazing. I'm thinking about this tweet that I saw. Sometimes you have to borrow the love that you have for another until your self love catches up. So you know where we're going right now. You heard her talk about the year of the woman. I just read a tweet. Let's break down. Let's start with that tweet right there. Sometimes you have to borrow the love that you have for another until your self-love catches up. Dr. Maya Angelou is somewhere right now, shouting right now. Explain to my litness, listeners what, what that means to you, Carolyn. Yes, what it means to me and how this came about and now that has helped thousands is, you know, when we, we are continually going in and out of storms in our lifetime. So sometimes we're in a storm, sometimes we're coming out of a storm and sometimes we're going into a storm. And you know, when we're getting ready to to get get into that next evolution of self, sometimes and don't get me wrong, every time, let's say this, it's scary <laughs> when you know that you're stepping into your greatness, when you know that you need to make a decision that's going to serve you or serve your family, serve your career, uh, serve your community. It's scary sometimes. And um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's really taking that fear taking whatever that is that might be holding you back that that before you take that leap is sometimes you have to borrow the love you have for another until your self-love catches up meaning sometimes when you're making a decision sometimes when you're leaning into that next evolution of growth you might not believe in you enough you might not have that self-worth and, and 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 it's real when we get really real and authentic about where we are in the decisions that we make in our lifetime, sometimes we have to borrow the love that another person has for us until our love for ourselves catches up, being different adversities that we've experienced in our lifetime. I also go into sometimes you have to borrow the light that others see in you until your light ignites. 
at each, we have people within our life, in our lifetime that come in our journey and they might say, hey, you know what? You're doing a great job. Or, you know, you have so much potential. And depending on our personal growth and where we at in that stage of life, we might not believe it. However, we can borrow what others see in us. We can borrow that love for a child or a spouse or a partner, and we can do something that benefits both of us and gives us that courage to push forward until we believe it ourselves, until we see it in, in ourselves. And so that's where that comes from. There's, there's many different struggles that we can have in our short lifetime, and that can determine the decisions that we make. Either they serve us or they don't serve us. But sometimes we have to borrow what others see in us in order to get to that next evolution of self, in order to get to what our God-given purpose is, to get to that next level and to serve our community, ourselves, and our world. So I know that you have a successful career. I've read all the things that were shared with me from my producer. They sent me video clips to sort of check you out and you're doing extremely well. But what I heard you talk about just in your introduction, you talked about going through these storms. What I also know about you is that you are a survivor of abuse from sexual, mental abuse. And I'm hearing you talk about being fierce. I'm gonna talk about what that acronym, acronym means and stands for. But how, how did you overcome that and then become the woman that you are right now? Because again, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about this little girl who had to hold on to something in order to know that there was something on the other side. What was that that you were holding on at that very young age that then you still share with your own children, then also with some of the clients that you're hanging out and talking to? 100% faith. Mm. Mm -hmm. Faith that there's something better. It's faith that there's hope. So where did that come from as, as, a, as a young kid who's living in the house, you know, being abused, who has family members that should not be around them, who's who's living in, in, a, in a level of poverty like many of the people are right now dealing with this pandemic. But how does a little girl at your age know about this faith? Where does that come from for you? You know, I think it came out of survival. And I think that, you know, I did learn about faith. I learned about God in an early age. And it became a, a relationship that was very deep and, and, and created um, on my own. And so um, the resilience and the opportunity to be able to have faith in something bigger than yourself, that, that is what got me through. Wow. Very well, very well said. You know, it's interesting. I just imagine, you know, you as a little girl uh, thinking that there's something so much bigger than what what I could be thinking about, I'm thinking about uh, the image of a young girl standing in front of the uh, TV screen and she's looking at Kamala Harris uh, and she's taking the pledge with the then vice president, now the vice president. And I can only imagine what was going through, going through that young girl's mind, but not only just the young lady, but the mom or dad or whoever was behind her looking at them. And I don't know if they encouraged her to do it. I don't know if she walked up. To, to the TV to do it doesn't really, really matter, but there's something deep down inside of all of us that we can sort of pull from. And how do you do that in your work? You know, because I do believe there's something deep down inside of all of us, even though we've gone through all of these challenges in our own life, how do you then sort of pull that out of individuals to get them to understand the power that they have within them? Mm, yes, good question. It comes from going through the exercise of gratitude. It gets all the way down to really honoring what are we grateful for no matter you know I, I talk a bit about bringing out the at out of the adversity the advantage what is the advantage that you see out of the adversity because your your past does not have to determine your future and with people who come to me and they say you know what i don't know where you know how with all the things happening in our world how are we supposed to do this and you know what what do i have to offer <laughs> and it's really it gets to all right, let's take a moment. Let's take a moment to really get underneath seeing what at those adversities are. What are they? And then also looking at opportunities that you have come through and um, you can find an advantage in it. For example, one, I say every day, 
practicing gratitude. At the moment you wake up, you can find something to be grateful for. You can be grateful for, I woke up today, I'm breathing. Maybe the sun's out, in Minnesota it's not. We can talk about um, all the different, you know, okay, well, what other, other things that I'm grateful for? I have a roof over my head. You can get very simple, very, but being able to get underneath that gratitude and getting in that space of great, grateful. So then what? it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, go ahead. And then getting into, all right, looking at the different adversities within my lifetime. And, and it's, this is not a comparison of, uh, you know, show me your scar, I'll show you mine kind of a thing. This is everyone's had different types of adversities. And what are the good things that you can pull out of them? For example, when I look back at the different adversities that I've been through, when I've gone and I've broken out of the circle of poverty, being able to patch together food, food pantry to food pantry while timing the bus in which to get to the next one while figuring out how to do that and try to get to you know, college classes running on the bus, you, turn, you figure out that that adversity, even though that is a, a, it's a tough thing to figure out, it turns out what is it that you can pull that's a positive? Well, actually, I'm a strategist <laughs> and that is a career, right? Yes. So how can you take the things that you have been through in your life, map it out, mind map that and practice and look very carefully at the things that you are good at? If you think about it, if you think about somebody who has struggled with um, maybe um, an entrepreneur, but someone who has struggled in the space of recovery perhaps they can repurpose that addiction to becoming an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur in self-development and an entrepreneur in business, just taking that adversity and switching it to something that serves them rather than doesn't serve them. So what would that process look like? So let's just use this as an example. The individual who you said was a substance abuser was basically used to getting over and taking advantage of individuals, the things that typically when you are an abuser, you attempted to do. Walk me sort of what that process would look like. And then maybe what are some of the questions if I was in that position, not just that particular person, but somebody who's stuck and who's stuck in that in, in life and rut. And what are some questions should they should they be asking themselves in order to then sort of flip the script? And as you as you as you poetically said, you know, I've proven to be resourceful, found a way to evolve. And once I learned the process, I continuously grow and I level up. Help help my listeners level up in the current situation they're actually in. Yes. So getting into, so when I speak and I talk about um, breaking down the stigma of mental health and substance abuse, having that space, first and foremost, to take, to have a dream. Now, try to remember when we were all, when we were four years old, and that's, this is interesting when I speak at different schools and, um, and then I get into middle school and high school. At four years old, if you ask any four, five, first grader, what's their dream? What do they wanna be when they grow up? They can tell you immediately. They can say, I wanna be a singer. I wanna be a dancer. I wanna be a firefighter. They can say it without hesitation. Now, as I speak with, great, uh, with children that as they get bigger at seventh and eighth grade, you start to notice that they, they're a little bit more apprehensive. They don't, they don't necessarily want to tell you what they want to be. They want to check and see what everybody else is saying. And then they want to wait and see if, like, what is it that you want to hear? And, and, it's, and as they get older, it gets even harder and harder. And as I teach in, in the university, you see graduates, there's juniors and seniors, and they're even at that point that they're afraid to share. We want to get underneath remembering what it is you wanted to be before your conditioning. And you want to think about, like, for example, me. I wanted to be Whitney Houston. <laughs> I loved Whitney Hold Houston. Hold on, let's stop right there. That means you got some pipe. That means, that means we're about to get a taste from the fierce sister, That's Carolyn, right. right now. We're about to get it. So you wanted to be Whitney Houston. Keep going. That's right. <laughs> and so I wanted to be Whitney Houston. But as, as I continued on this journey of life, I forgot about that dream. And when I come back to reflect on it, as a grown, as an adult, as, as I, and I've let go and I forgot about that dream, taking a moment to think about what was that? What was it that I wanted to be when I was that age? And it wasn't necessarily that when I, when I, when I unpackage it, it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to be Whitney Houston. I mean, that would have been nice. 
However, it was really the feeling that she gave me, that feeling of hope, that feeling of um, perseverance, that feeling that you can do anything. And I wanted to be able to give that feeling to others. And what is that? That opens up even more doors. So when you truly understand and you take a reflection on what was it that I was after? If I wanted to be a firefighter, was it because I have a servant soul and I wanted to help? If, if I wanted to be a singer, is it that I wanted to be a singer or was, it the, was I after the feeling that I got when I sang or when the feeling that that singer or that, that, that pop star or whatever it is gave to me and perhaps that feeling is something that you are meant to give to others in transformation, perhaps in being able to create nonprofits. Maybe you're, you know, getting after what that is and truly then identifying and it breaks open the doors of all the things that you could be. So that's number one. The next thing is that really letting go, letting go of the couldas, the wouldas and the shouldas because we don't want to shoot all over ourselves <laughs> as far as what we should have done. Mm -hmm. We're right here, right now. The past has happened. The future is a dream and the present is right here and right now. So letting go of all the exteriors and really focusing on that, that dream that was and re and, and reigniting it. Then doing that, starting to think about, okay, if there's no past, if, if I let go of the past and I, and I let go of holding on to the future because of the, the couldas or the shouldas and the right now, you now are extremely powerful. You're extremely powerful in the fact that the world opens up to your potential and what you can do. So, Carolyn, why do you think people get stuck in the past? Why do you think I tell people, why do you think people are driving a car but looking at the rearview mirror? They want to go ahead, but they're constantly looking back. What do you think? You know, how did you get stuck? Because again, I bring people on here to share their personal story. Mm -hmm. How did you get unstuck? Um, and then why do people get stuck and don't mm -hmm. want to move? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear. So we, what I teach as, as my fierce method, what I talk about is um, breathe, focus, and fierce action. And how this was created out of survival in which to come out of that space. And so what it is, is taking taking a deep breath, breaking it down. One wise person, when I was standing there in the Salvation Army, fearful for my life, uncertain of my future, and immobilized by fear. I needed something new. And someone said to me, meant very well, it's okay, Carolyn, you can do this one day at a time. Now, one day at a time, when you're dealing with uh, flashbacks, you're dealing with PTSD, you're dealing with situational depression, anxiety, overwhelm, and you're literally fearful for your life. One day at a time is too much. I had to be able to break it down. And I broke it down into five minute increments. You can muster up enough. Uh, you know, you can do just about anything you don't want to do for five minutes. And so what I did is and five minutes can be, you know, can be a long time. Like five minutes can be a, you think about a class that you in as a as a student, you love Miss Jones class. Five minutes was, it seemed like 30 seconds, but Mr. Jackson down the hall, five minutes seemed like you were in there for a whole, for a whole year. So you write five minutes is, is a, is a, is a good enough time to, to right. move on. Go ahead. It's, it's digestible. Yeah, digestible. Now, it might be painful, but you can still do it. <laughs> right. And so five minutes, taking a deep breath. So getting present in the present and then focusing on one thing, focusing on one goal, and then fierce action and not just action fierce action and the reason i say fierce action is when you are fearful when you're doing something you don't want to do when that fight or flight mechanism uh, from your sympathetic nervous system turns on you have an automatic reaction and what i say when i say fierce action is that i want you to take that trigger take that emotion that pops up and you can feel you can feel it boiling up in your in your stomach as you get as that anxiety rate raises or that overwhelm. You know what I mean when that, that pit of your stomach. Harness that emotion, harness it and use it as fuel for that action. Meaning how what 
action are you going to choose to get you closer to that goal that serves you? So in the past, five minutes ago, when that anxiety, that anger, that overwhelm, whatever that emotion is pops up, your action in the past might have been to make a choice that does not serve you, a self-sabotaging one, something that does not serve you and that could put you in a place you don't want to be. Now you have this information and you've set, you've taken the time to figure out what's that next step, what's that one goal, one thing that I need to do for the next five minutes in which to get me closer to a long, that long-term goal. And I'm going to harness that emotion and I'm going to, it doesn't mean you don't have to feel the emotion. It means I'm going to own it and I'm going to use that emotion to push me in a direction that serves me with that action. It's interesting. You said the five, you, you used five minutes. Are you familiar with Mel Robbins at all? Mel yes. Robbins. Yeah. So Mel Robbins has what she calls like the five, like the five minute rule. Yes. She went through this level of depression and she sort of sort of did this countdown and you use a five minute rule. I mean, you, you talk about, she talks about five seconds. You talk about five minutes. You've already jumped into it. I want you to continue. I want you to keep going. You've already jumped into your book. Your book is called Fierce, which I love, love, love the title. Um, and my listeners are probably hearing you say fierce, fierce, fierce. They're looking at you like, well, she is fierce. I'm looking at her. I see the background. She, the background, she has fierce all over the place. Talk to us about the title. Why did you choose the title fierce? F I E R C E. What does that actually mean? Acronym. And then in this book, I know you talk, you share a personal story that is riveting and heartbreaking. Can you also talk about, talk about that story briefly to our listeners? Mm -hmm. So I, I chose the book name because it really resonated with me at the time and it kept coming back to me. I had, I had like 20 different, 20 different titles. <laughs> and when you're publishing your book, when you go, you know, you know, when you go through this, you end up with 20 different titles and you have to, yeah. you know, nail it down and, and go round and round. And this, this fears kept popping up and it kept popping up and, and, and all of the people that were helping me, uh, you know, guide me up. Uh, most of them said, no, nope, no, that's just too cliche. <laughs> now, when you think in fierce, are you thinking fashion fierce? Like you like, man, that is a fierce dress. That was a fierce. Were you thinking that type of fierce no. when it came to your mind? Okay. No. As soon as I thought about it, I was like, like when you think of it, like, man, he is fierce. She is fierce. So that's what sort of popped up into my mind when you thought, thought about it. But keep going on the story about why you chose the name. I chose the name because of what it means to me is resilience. So what it means to me is just like uh, just like in the words of Whitney Houston, you know, they can take everything away from you, but they cannot take away your dignity. Man, you are and, on this Whitney. You are oh, yeah, there's a you song know you inside know of you. I'm feeling it right now <laughs> that you're about to take us to church before we leave. But you are quoting Whitney Houston. <laughs> yeah, <that>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they cannot and take it away. They cannot you. take away our dignity. And that is what fierce means to me. It means that no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what we've seen or been through, there's that our faith and our soul and our dignity cannot be taken away. And that is fierce. So does each letter stand for something? Yes, it does. So each letter, I, I, it's an acronym. So mm -hmm. F is for focus breath, which we talked about. Uh, I is for identi identify. So identifying what that goal is, identify where you're going. And then you have E for examining barriers, because there's a lot of times the biggest barrier for us getting to where we need to be is ourselves. And so we talk about that in the book. <laughs> and then we talk about reflecting. So taking that uh, ability of um, opportunity to just reflect, just take a deep breath, take some space to understand, all right, where am I and how did I get here? And then C is for courage. We do have the courage to move in a direction that serves us. And then E for execution. So moving forward, being able to take action, because we can talk about it for years, but when are we going to actually move? And in this book, you share your own personal story uh, uh, that is somewhat riveting and heartbreaking and how you sort of use that. Can you, can you talk about that? You know, what should people should expect about reading this book and what would they, what do you think they're going to walk away learning about you and also about themselves in the process. Yes. So uh, for forewarning, it is, it is, um, uh, it may bring up triggers for many. And I talk about uh, my journey, my evolution of love, my evolution of really understanding what that meant. And 
Um, sexual abuse starting at age four from both men and women. Talk about physical and emotional abuse growing up. And you, so you want to stop right there for a second. So you mm -hmm. talked about love. What was your definition then of love? Because you talked about what you thought love what, what is mm -hmm. or what it was during that time. And then sort of how did it then shift? Well, you know, at a, at a young age, when you experience sexual abuse at such a young age, you, you, it's very confusing. And, and I had a skewed view of what love was. Really what I understood it to be is that I was put here on this earth to be used and, uh, and that's all it was, oh, that's all it was. And so as I grew and, and with that skewed definition of what, that, what love was, I then made decisions accordingly. So as I grew up in that environment of, of abuse, and then also um, having a mother who suffered from mental health, untreated mental health issues, sometimes days are really great and sometimes days are really bad and it's up and down and all around. And uh, being exposed to people that sought to abuse me as well because my mother was ill. She just, she couldn't, she couldn't be there um, a lot of times. And so that, that was hard and I, and, but then you you also grow up, you know, you just, you continue to grow and you have this particular perspective of what life is and what your value is. And when, when you don't have a basis at a young age, you can, and as I did, make decisions on what your, your vision of what love is. And at that young age, I thought that love was abuse. I thought that uh, chaos was also love. I understood that manipulation and um, was also love. And so therefore I chose to get into an abusive relationship and I thought it was love. And then I became pregnant and then married. And uh, when I, when my daughter was born, it was interesting. It was, it was not interest. It was looking back. <laughs> it was interesting, but in the moment it was surreal. So my daughter, when she was born, uh, she was born colicky, which makes sense because of the environment that I had her in. Uh, she didn't stop screaming for two months. And at two months of being exhausted from being a new mom, not knowing what I'm doing and a screaming baby and a, a husband that doesn't let you sleep because of, you know, not being good enough. Um, I prayed, I prayed at four o'clock in the morning saying, you know, God, I don't know what, I don't know what else to do. I don't know send me a sign of some kind because I'm about to give up. And at four in the morning, while my daughter had been screaming for two months straight, she stopped screaming and she looked me in my eyes as if she's looking to my soul saying to me, I'm your sign. And in that moment, I realized what true love was. It was unconditional. It well, was not. I just got chill bumps just this because I'm such a visual person and your words are so poetic. I just got chills thinking about what that felt, what that could have felt like, looked like at 4 a.m. And I believe me, I know a screaming baby when I when I hear I got a new puppy and I, I'm just waiting for this dude to look at me, maybe bark and say, I'm the one that you're supposed to love because I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this animal right here. <laughs> so I so I get that. And so that was sort of like a. Was that like a turning point in your life and, and your journey? So what, what type of response are you getting from women, not only just from the book, but from women when you share these stories? Because a lot of times, you know, Carolyn, you know this better than I do. We, our stories become our lives and they're just a part of who we are. And mm -hmm. we, we keep retelling our stories over and over again and we get stuck. Mm -hmm. But what I'm noticing about you and from what I read about you and hanging out with you, you didn't allow your story to keep you stuck. You, you, you're using it as a way to remind yourself how far you've come. Because I think, Carolyn, we don't do that enough. We don't do this. We don't pat ourselves on the back enough. Right. And so what type of response are you getting from, from the women that you're working with when you do share the story? And also uh, from the women who are reading and men who are reading your book. Yes. So and the last and one. Women. And finally, does you... you and when you share this story with your daughter, and I'm sure she's like, if I hear that story one more time on stage, because I know you have three kids, I have three kids. They're like, listen, if you say, I'm going to start charging you every time. And then the last question is, you know, 
when she when she hears you share that story, what are some of her thoughts about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the response that you're getting? And then yes, from men and women. It, yes. And it, what's what's interesting is that we each have this evolution that we need to move into. And that moment was a sign of evolution. It was time to take a leap. And we have those moments in different places in our lives. It's not, that wasn't the first and it won't be the last. We're continually evolving, but being able to recognize those. And that's why I, I like what you said is it's true. We, should, we do need to look back. We do need to um, look back to honor the, the, the times where we've made a move. And sometimes we haven't made a move and we need to be able to recognize by hearing the stories like that, that it's time for a move. And so um, men and women both, that 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 hear the story that work with me that um hear me speak it's it resonates in different ways and each person has their own story that they think back of yeah i i did do that i did evolve from that i did move into that next level of me and like you said that's part of you it's a piece of you and it, and it, uh, it doesn't go away. You don't want to shove it in the closet because you know that's no good. You want to make sure it's, it, it evolves with you and as you move and grow into the next evolution of you. And so, yes, my daughter, she, she supports, she supports me hundred <laughs> percent. And sometimes, you know, she'll, she'll be there and she'll be like, you know, helping with uh, signing of books or things like that. And she's like, oh yeah, you know, I heard that before. I know I'm special. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know my kids, they, they like, if I hear this story, and then, then, and then you know you change the story up a little bit. You got to add a little spice to it, add a little spice to to the stories. So, so uh, you know, with, with that, uh, with your fierce book and with your talks and with your lectures, um, what are some things that you're learning about yourself, Carolyn, uh, in this process of, of, of evolution? That we're always growing. There's not, you know, oh, the biggest thing I think is, and it might be something that resonates with you and with the audience is, you know, there isn't an end game. There's not an end. It's a continuous. It's always, you're always evolving. You're always learning. And when you're learning, when you're done learning, you're done. So it's, uh, I really enjoy that because sometimes we get caught up in, well, when? when I get there, when I make it, when I win, 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 and actually we're already there. So being able to appreciate where we are right now, honoring all the journey that we've been on, and there isn't a win, it's right now, enjoy it. I know it from reading about you, you sort of describe yourself as a successful person who's gone through many challenges like many of us have. Um, with that being said, what's your definition of success and then how do you know you've reached it? And then what's the one thing that usually gets in the way from someone being a successful in, in being successful in any career that they choose? Mm, yes. So the definition of success is really to me and how I define it is freedom. Freedom from your past, maybe things that are holding you back, freedom financially and freedom to be able to design what your life is, who the people are, the, you know, the people that are in your life. So that success, success to me is freedom. So financial relationships and your wellness, mind, body, and spirit. And what's the one thing that usually gets in the way from someone being successful or as they're, as they're going through a journey to sort of reach quote unquote success? Mm. So the biggest thing is, again, right back to self, getting into really understanding yourself and wh what is it that you believe that you're not successful? Because once you can break through that barrier, then you're able to see the path of success. We continually get in our own way. We continually, the, the, the voices that we talk, say to ourselves, our own self-talk, our own concept of what other people might think. Those are the things that are the biggest barriers to success. So, Once, so speaking, so speaking of self-talk, if you can go back and talk to little, little Carolyn living in Minnesota in that cold place or wherever you all live, if you can go back and talk to that beautiful girl who has a beautiful spirit, even know what she's going through, what would you say to her? I would say you are worthy. 
Well said. Well said. So, Carolyn, how can my listeners get in contact with you if they want to work with you, if they want to purchase a copy of your book, and if they and if they want to hear more about the great things that you're doing? So they can reach out at my website and download my free BFF method, Breathe, Focus, Fierce Action, your new best friend. You can download that on my website, carolyncolleen.com. What's your final thoughts for our listeners? I would like to say that you can ignite your inner ferocity. You can do it five minutes at a time and your future is your decision. Well, listen, you all better run out and get this free BFF download to pick up her book, Fierce, F-I-E-R-C-E. As I told you, this is the season for the woman and they women, and they are bringing the noise. And I'm so honored that Carolyn got a chance to hang out with me. Now, I know you're in school. Are you Dr. Carolyn yet? Or are you on your way? You're on your way. Three months. Three months. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dr. Carolyn is on her way. So thanks for hanging out with me uh, today. It has been a joy talking with you, engaging with you uh, in this great conversation, not only just for women, but for people in general. Um, but you can't leave yet. The second part of the show is called the Super Bomb Questions and it's brought to us by Mountain May. But I ask you some different questions, Carolyn. This time they're going to be really, they're going to be really, really fast. You got to respond as quickly as as possible, but you're doing a great job anyway, because you are an overcomer. Are you ready? Ready, ready. All right, so here we go. What's your favorite word? Authenticity. What's your favorite quote or Bible verse, or maybe a song uh, that you enjoy? Ah, wow. When you know better, you do better. What's your superpower? Resilience. What brings you to tears of joy? Love. What brings you to tears of sorrow? Love. What do you wish you had more time to do? Ooh, that's great. Oh, uh, I got to think fast. <laughs> um, hobbies. Hmm. What is the book or books you've given most as a gift and why? Untethered Soul, so that uh, people can realize what's holding them back. Oprah Winfrey talks about that book mm -hmm. all the time. What's your morning routine once you do all the biological things that we all have to do? <laughs> It's uh, morning affirmations, exercise. I do the miracle morning. So uh, exercise, affirmations, uh, visualization, and um, reading and journaling. What values do you live by every day? Uh, thanks to God. Every I day. think I think I may know the answer to this, but we're going to see. If you won the Miss America Talent Competition, what would your talent be? Uh, igniting your inner ferocity and being resourceful. See, I thought you were going to say singing and I'm oh. Whitney Houston, but I will take that. Thanks for hanging out with me, Carolyn. It has been a pleasure, you know, listening to you, inspiring all of us from someone who's gone from being homeless to now about to get this PhD in three months from who one who's gone from abuse to now motivating and inspiring other women. You know, you are an example of history. So happy Black History Month. Today, we celebrate you. So thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you. And I also want to thank my engineer, Alexander Block, my super duper producer. She is back. She is no longer sick. Nicole Klimpaka, thank you. We need you. I need you. Supremacy for our theme music. And all of you for listening, make sure you subscribe. Stop being stingy. We're on every platform. Stop saying you can't find us. And if you want to know about me, more about me, go to Dr. DRLDS.com. And as always, believe that something wonderful is about to happen, but some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess. Thanks for tuning in and go out and do something for someone other than yourself today. You've been listening to Sound Bomb. Peace. The Super Bomb questions are brought to you by Mountain Made CBD. Mountain Made is changing the CBD game by offering a line of high dose CBD tablets at an affordable price. Their products are THC free and third party tested for accuracy, cleanliness, and potency. Their products, which ship nationwide, include Build for CBD saturation, Boost for precision titration, and Recover for rest and rehab. With nine years experience in hemp and fitness, Mountain Maid's founders are focused on creating a quality product to help those who live an activated lifestyle. Check out mountainmade.life. Again, that's mountainmade.life to find out more about how their products can help you crush life. 
Remember, their products ship nationwide. Go check out their website today and follow them on social media at Mountain Made. That's the at symbol M N T M A D E. Our staff at Sound Balming uses Build before our morning workout, which helps to push our bodies to a whole new level on a daily basis. Try Build, try Boost, try Recover. Our staff is using these products to enhance our active lifestyle naturally, and we are crushing life with Mountain Made CBD, and you can too. Start today by going to mountainmade.life and ordering Build, Boost, Recover, or the multitude of other products that they have which will enhance your lifestyle. I promise you, you won't regret it.